when it comes to importing products, uh, it's pretty simple. What you're going to want to do is go to settings, activate the developer mode. You'll know you're in developer mode when this little bug icon is available on your screen. Once there, you want to go to the record that you want to import. So products. And once you're in the product record or any record, always look for the underlying fields. Those mean that the field that these are mandatory fields. You can also see the underlying fields by going to the model. And you'll always see the name of the model you're in up here. This is model equal to product.template. So you can go back to the home screen, type in models, database structure models, type in product.template, and you'll see here the product template, and you'll be able to filter out your required fields here. Now, what you can do is you can, if you can copy these, I'm not sure if I'm not without copying a whole line. I don't think that's right. So you want to create all of these required fields on the sheet as you see it here. And that's one way. The other way is to just go to the product template because I know you don't need all those required fields right away because some of them are activated, some of them are not. Uh, we can just look at the underline. So we have name. I remembered a lot of them. Um, so product import. We have name, type, catag, ID, UOM, um, UOM, and uh, we actually don't even need UOM. Responsible and accounting. So we don't even need those because we're not. Uh, we are not going to be implement importing unit of measure yet. Um, now, once you have that, you're also looking to import your price. Assuming this is the sales price, then you go to your product, hover over sales price here, and you'll see list price is the name of that field. If you also want to import unit of measure, you can. You just have to make sure it's turned on in your settings. So we can say that. And then we'll have these two fields here, UOM ID and UOM PO ID. So UOM ID and UOM PO ID. So now you have all your fields listed. Now you can take the names of your products. And you can import them. It's also a description, item number and description. So what you'll do is name and to the right. um, internal. Oops. And we'll have here is name, and we just want to make sure that this is the uh, default code. You have to make sure your units are uh, set up here. So now once you have this, you can 
download as a CSV, go into your product page, import, load file, test our import. It will take a minute to run through, make sure all the data validates, make sure all the required fields are met. And make sure it's formatted correctly. Everything seems valid and we can import our products. And just like that, it will bring all of these 600 records into the system. Not sure how long it will take. Maybe it takes 30 to 45 seconds. So I uh, apologize for having this on the video. I'm not, I'm not hardwired into internet or anything. So it's running through my Wi-Fi. There we go. And now you'll see, and one reason why Odoo is able to store so many records and not have it impact performance is because you can control the number of records on display. By default, it'll be one through 80. If I want to see one through 250 in a list view, I can look at, you know, I'd change that to then, uh, you know, maybe I'd change it to 518. And Odoo will actually load all 518 records in that list view here. Or if you just want one through, uh, you know, five records, it'll show you that. And you'll have to swap through all the pages to see everything else. You get the idea. One through 400, it'll load it. You can see then the remaining here. Go in, you'll see your price is updated, your type, all category, and everything searchable. So your reference ID can be um, F01. 207, right, F01, show you all products related. So let me know if you have any additional questions and I'll be happy to address.